lovely September morning. Probably see we've got the float rod, we've also got a fly rod, but we do have some live prawns today. And we're going to go and fish the river mouth here at Rye, hoping to get a little bit of movement on these prawns. Trying to keep these prawns uh, nice and cold. It's the biggest problem you have with them. I got them this morning in a shrimp net. But you've got to keep them nice and cold. Uh, to easily boil in there. So Just a basic float rig as a weight bead onto a big length of fluorocarbon treble hook. The biggest problem we're going to have to overcome is the speed of this flow, I think. So you don't want to pull it up tight because the prawn will float right to the surface. Just got to let it drift in that water. It's a case of finding the right height. In a minute that float will cock, I hope. Maybe it's a bit shallow. There you go. Uh, because of this boat's obviously coming down this channel, I'm going to cast further out to the other side, might be shallower water. There's a great book actually by Tristan Gooley about reading water. You do start to see the temperature change in the water where the water's running fast. So we've got a flooding tide here, we're about to be pushed off this little mark. Um, vicious, really, really dangerous, don't come down here. Um, you can see, but as soon as it breaches that little wall there, a little bit of pace will come out. That's because of the eddy. And that is where the bass sit. But they do like it when it's pushed past them. Show you again. I'm just going to stop that and then bring that through into this eddy here. And you watch the float will slow down. It's not cocked yet. It should bring it back into this eddy. Everything slows down. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. There you go, slowing down a little bit down there. They're just casting one off this wall now. Got quite a gentle cast you need. And it's a case of seeing where that float goes because the bass do rely on a little bit of tidal movement, but they'll be lazy where they can so Bringing that past eddies and obstructions is always quite good. Actually, looks quite good down. Looks quite good down here. Look, down there. You got like a shallower verse, shallower bit here, and then the main channel is the other side. You see the red boys around there. That float's not moving much, but if it goes down, it's excitement time. <laughs> Probably best not to go down on this section here. Um, oh, it's going under the float, but I might be touching bottom there a bit. Just bouncing that off the bottom. Sometimes it's worth dragging it back. The float's sitting quite nicely there. It's not going anywhere. 
I like to think of it as the bass are, as soon as there's a bit of movement in the water, they're moving into the river. And we're going to get a point where this river water is going to come out. What a beautiful day. There's a guy fishing over the other side with the lures. I'm going to have another look at those lures. I'm still paranoid about keeping my prawns too warm. <laughs> and we have got, I've got the fly rod today as well. We'll go up there in a minute, into the sun. Now I do have this Bombarda float today. Uh, it's like a weighted float, it'll cast like an absolute demon. You put a lure on this end, and uh, the lure's like a little feather or something like that, so you can cast a light lure a long way. You can use it with a prawn actually. Uh, so we might have a go at that later. Let's see how that water's come. Just want to walk, work this float into that eddy. And down. Snagging here, this float. We're going to adjust the stop knot, make it a little bit lower. Um, power gun or a little. Uh, all I've done today is just use a little rubber band, double overhand knot. And then on this float, you've got the weight there. I'll put a lead shot as well on that uh, line. A lot of it is a case of just getting the prawn at the right depth, dropping down slowly. You can add the shot, as I say. And then it's a really good indication of what the water's doing and how it's moving, especially on rivers. A bit further out, as you'd expect, where the water channel widens. Uh, the float's not moving as quickly but it's just going to go past this little ledge here you see the float moving down there so i'm just going to walk down and uh, sort of walk with the float a bit see if we can connect to one i do have every confidence in the prawn as okay so you're gonna have to put up with some of my drawing now you can imagine that this is the rod here so rod tip Doo -doo -doo. and this line coming down here is braid I do like braid you can use mono obviously for float fishing uh, and on that length of braid that's coming down first thing you want to do is tie a stop knot on here and that stop knot's got to be small enough um, where you've got a big drop off the float it needs to be able to go through the rod rings when you cast because that will end up back here somewhere um, different ways of doing the stop knot we just did an overhand knot in a rubber band. That's the cheapest way. You can use proper float stops. You hook those onto a little loop and pull those on. And then you want a bead here. So this is the stop knot. Um, and then you've got a bead here. And thread that on over the line from this way. So there's your bead and you've got your stop knot. That's where you set the depth. And then you put the float up there as well. Different sorts of floats on here. Nine inch cigar type floats are fine. You, you can use Tronics Pro weighted floats as well. They're quite good. If you really wanted to make it simple, uh, then you're just tying a hook length on here. Um, you can tie it on a snap swivel or a swivel. Um, and then that length here, um, what I tend to do is make a few of those up, different size hooks, different types of hooks, depending on the bait. Uh, and then this bit is made of fluorocarbon. You can have the option as well to save that this bit of the float, when this comes down, can get stuck on there. Sometimes I'll put an extra stop knot on a bead here, just to give a bit more control of the depth of the float in both ways, and it keeps it further away from the bait. Um, this sort of this can put bass off, particularly a bigger bass will be wary of all this sort of metal work here. So, so that's how it works with a weighted float. Um, if it's unweighted, uh, like these cigar floats, then you want a weight in this system as well and that weight um, needs to balance the float so that when the float sits in the water uh, it's cocked properly like that and, 
And then the other thing you can do, obviously, on this line coming down here, you can put little bits of shot. Sometimes I like to put one there. It all depends on the weight of the bait. Um, but you can add a little bit of weight here to make sure that this bait goes down uh, and you've got this fishing pretty much straight down. Something very enjoyable about a float going over. A little bit close now, it's gonna snag on that wall, isn't it? So here we are in Rye, it's a beautiful September day, could be the middle of August of course, to the bass obviously. Look at it here, beautiful. So we've got another float on now, this is a Bombarda float. And normally that will drop right the way down to a lure, like a light feather, and then shoot back up the line. But I've just sort of held it in place, uh, similar to the other one. So I'll leave the how-to float rig uh, after this video. Um, but very simply, I try and use fluorocarbon for as much as I can. I use fluorocarbon as a length, and I either tie those length on directly using an FG knot, um, and then sometimes I'll weight it. You see there, there's like a little um, shot. They're not lead anymore, but there's a little shot there just to make sure that when that prawn sinks down, down it goes. Um, I've also listed the hooks that I use as well. Um, this is looking a little bit rusty this one, don't get this one. Um, but basically your hook goes on the end, don't worry about them being a treble. Bass have big mouths, um, I've never had a problem with them damaging the fish and the hook up rate is much better with trebles and prawns. Um, then that will be tied using an FG knot onto uh, the braid normally. 15 pound braid, 15 pound fluoro. Uh, and then give yourself a stop knot both sides of the float. Uh, you can control it a little bit better in stronger tides then. Um, but basically I've got a stop knot there that's actually using an elastic band. Uh, you can put a bead in there as well just to stop it jamming on the end of the float. Now this is a Bombarda float that we looked at earlier but um, it's not really designed for this sort of fishing. I just, <laughs> I've lost two floats already so we'll just give this one a go. Um, and that's designed to go all the way down to a, like a light lure. But in this case, any float here, the nine inch cigar floats are good. Then you want the bead. And then we've got a different type of stop knot there. These are the ones that you um, hook on. And then basically that is where the depth will stop. Um, that can be quite long at, at times. And obviously that will roll all the way down to your reel if, you, if it's needed and well ah we're in nice we got one on the fly rod.
one. I just want to replay this bit for you as well because I did notice when we caught this one now you see there that's the fish that we've got on the line but look at this this is another fish possibly three fish coming I don't know what are they three times the size I'll show you again look our fish and some more in the shoal and this happens a lot you catch a bass and there'll be other ones following so what do you think uh, put in the comments if you think that is another fish, maybe two more. Uh, so obviously my mission now was to try and catch a bigger one. Right on the rear a bit. Ah, much better fish. Well, a nice little bass that one. Whoa, <laughs> that's a lovely bass. It's about 47, about 47 centimeters, and a real treat on the light line. Delighted to get that. Nicely hooked. Uh, what I'm doing is trying to drift it through the gap in this rake water now. Yay, we've had a bass, always happy to get it on this fly rod as well, uh, albeit with a prawn on the other end, it's pretty good. And I'm just letting that sink down. This is an intermediate fly line and I've attached on here 15 pound fluorocarbon and you can actually feel the prawn knocking you can feel the prawn clicking which is what we want it's obviously that's the attraction for the bass well it's a quite a precarious position here and, and looking back I probably shouldn't have been up here I've got no sort of PFD or flotation device if I was to fall in the currents are quite harsh but the good thing is you can uh, fish this mark exactly from the beach in a lot more comfort and safety. So um, just looking back on this, do keep yourself nice and safe and you, you will catch fish uh, in and around this area from the beach. As the two people fishing on the beach also got some bass as well. Put that into the second segment. And sometimes I'll put a couple on there. 
So I don't know what you think about trebles. You can unhook it reasonably easy on a bass. Plus they're more likely to hook it. It's the best hook to use for this. This rod is the Drift, the DRX, uh, the knife at two rods. These are brilliant, really good. Um, we're doing a full on review and you can actually win one new line of lure rods from Drift. So what are we looking at here? Well, it doesn't look like much, but what's happening is some really small bass as a shoal and they're coming up and trying to learn how to get a prawn, I think. If you look very closely, I know um, there's a fair few of you watch these videos on your television and you could probably see it a lot better on the, on the TV, but I find this stuff fascinating anyway. The little bass shoals coming up. I kept thinking, why am I losing prawns? I haven't um, connected with a fish, and that's that's what they're doing. They're just nip, nicking them off. So I thought I'd persevere. I don't know if you can see, if you look closely now, you, you just see a shoal coming in. As soon as I bring that prawn to the surface, then the shoal have gone. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to have to try and do now is just see if I can get one of them. Uh, then we know that it is the bass that have been nicking them, the very, very small bass. Well, this will be going in my diary, um, which I've replicated actually, so you can buy it. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's basically just a fishing diary with blank spaces where you record your fishing day, uh, good or bad, and eventually over time you do tend to notice um, where the fish are at certain states of the tide. And today is no exception. I'm going to write this in the book and then hopefully I'll know when it best produces the bass. Uh, what I'm doing is trying to drift it through the gap in this rake water now. It's a small one. Yeah, I've got one. <laughs> it's tiny. It just goes to show. <laughs> well, beautiful fish, the bass. Close as I'll come to LRF fishing. <laughs> it's quite frustrating, I can feel them. It's quite frustrating, I can feel them nipping. Even simpler with the uh, fly rod, treble hook on the end, about 12 foot of fluorocarbon, and oh, it's worth checking. Look at that. I've got a little nick in there, and I bet if I pull, look at that, that was just about to go. I'm glad I didn't get a good fish on there. Um, and then I just tie that on uh, with a double uni knot onto this longer bit of line here. Uh, this is a fly line, It'll sink, fast sinking line. Uh, it's almost got lead in it. Uh, that'll sink right the way down. But I prefer for fly fishing and using the fly rod in the sea, an intermediate line. Um, I'm no real expert, as you can see here from this casting.
Well, had a few of these little ones. So please like and subscribe. Um, we do lots of lure fishing on the channel if you're new to us. Um, and please put a comment. Um, I know there's a few of you that have been watching the channel for a while, uh, but just stick a comment on there, that'd be great. Just introduce yourself. Love to know who you are and who's watching. Oh, it's hot. <laughs>